Hello, Dramas and Other Creatures. I'm here with another conversation with a fellow YouTuber, a drummer, a teacher, a, a very august video maker who's, who's just uh, made a brilliant series about how to trade up your drums uh, and, you know, get the dream kit that you've always desired. I'm here with Harry Weston Cottrell. Uh, over to you, Harry. Let's uh, give us a bit of an introduction and, and tell us what you're about. And uh, we yeah. can have a bit of a chat about, you know, getting better drums. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Stuff. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm Harry. I've, I've uh, had a YouTube channel for probably seven or eight years now, um, kind of on and off in places. Uh, I'm a working drummer and percussionist. I do a little bit of teaching and uh, I'm also, uh, I do a lot of video work as well, um, a lot of podcast production and things like that. Um, but I like to think of myself as a, uh, as a drummer first and foremost, as I'm sure we all do. Um, yeah, we all have to do other things. We have to do other things, yeah, to fund our uh, to fund our music careers, as I've as I've put it a few times. Yeah. So and yeah. so, how did you get started with the YouTube channel? It's, it's a while back. You know, I'm one of the people who sort of jumped into it not very seriously, and then tried to up the game in the 2020s for some reason. Um, <laughs> but you've been you've been at it very consistently for a long time, and you've produced like a, a really broad uh range of stuff from how to play the drums how to go to a gig what sort of gear is useful for this and that there's a bit of electronics in there the whole yeah. thing and even one of our veteran members of our drumming community as well showing us how how they did it in the olden days yeah definitely i mean i i, I can't remember exactly how i got into it i mean i think it was one of those things i was because it would have been 2016 so i would have been like i don't know what 19 or 20 and um it was just kind of a thing you know um it was, it was like, well, if I want to be kind of, you know, pursuing music seriously, um, I need an online presence and YouTube was, you know, um, it was like, the, well, it still is the kind of obviously one of the biggest platforms, but um, it was a little bit different. TikTok wasn't around and things like that. Um, and it, YouTube just seemed to kind of make sense, really. And I was aware of um you know what some people can do with youtube and the sort of uh living they can make from it and the the sort of um you know kind of uh path that it can take them on basically uh mm -hmm. career wise and and you know hopefully the fun and meeting people and you know even doing even doing things like this as well um that can come from it and uh so i started just filming videos on my phone um i remember what i first did actually i found a drum kit in a bin um, it was a very small kit. I don't know if any of the videos are still, I reckon I probably took them down, um, out of shame. Uh, but it was basically, <laughs> the, it was like a child's bass drum and snare yep. drum. And it was, um, it was old. It was probably fifties, I reckon. Um, probably similar size actually to the silver kit that's on top of your shelf. Um, oh, okay. sort of size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, that's my timer kit. That's a cheap little thing I can drag around on the tube. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was a tavern. Um, yeah, cool. That's that's great. But it was it was a bit like that, and it, it was like really rough and rusted and everything. And I remember covering it covering it in light bulbs basically, and setting it up, and it sounded awful. And it was kind of I, I did the first few videos of just kind of um, like you don't need any equipment kind of thing. That was like my yep. that was my take because I remember seeing Drumio and thinking, yep. well, I, I can't compete with that. So I'm yep. going to go the opposite way, and and that was what I tried to do. I mean, it didn't really work, to be honest. <laughs> but uh, you know, but it was an idea, and, and I, you know, I stick by it. That it, we have know. to go through all those things that don't work to find the things that do, don't we? Yeah, it's part of the process, isn't it? And that, that's yeah. okay, you know. The earliest um, sort of cheap gear thing I can see on your channel is fifty quid Roland kit. The fifty quid Roland kit, yeah, that was that was good. That was I. I remember I sold that to a student of mine, I think, in the end. But um, yeah, I've had a few good Roland kit deals actually. You can you, you can get lucky on eBay actually with a Roland. Um, I think people just buy an electronic kit for their, you know, their child. They don't play after six months. They just want to get yeah. rid of it, you know, or maybe somebody else in the family bought it. They don't know how much they paid for it and they just took it on 50 quid, 100 quid. And they're really cheap. That's you a lot do of time. Well. Yeah, this Not is like case. after Christmas as well. You're looking at maybe uh, April time, really cheap few kits will come on the market, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. And sort of towards the end of the month, I think also people have got less money. It's a better time to buy stuff, I would, I think. Um, yeah. I know certainly my dad would agree with that when he's bought cars in the past and stuff. Um, yeah. Not the case with my TD30 that I bought the other week. That wasn't cheap, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was yeah. value, though, for what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's lovely. I mean, I was on it actually before this. I ended up, um, uh, like, this morning I had a bit of time, so I was uh, I was on, on the Roland. But, uh, but yeah, it's just amazing. It's, it's, it's freed up, like the ability to just play when i want now and it's, yeah. it's so, i mean are we, are we allowed to talk then about the sort of outcome of your whole series because you, yeah you yeah of course where you started off with sort of nothing i think really wasn't it what what was your starting point so i had um I trade had your way up to the the dream kit of the sonar 
SQ2. Uh, SQ2, that was it. Yeah, so so basically I'd had this idea. Um, I've always wanted an SQ2. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's like a real top-end flagship, over-the-top, over-engineered, very kind of, uh, you know, very German in the approach of like everything's heavy and just big and, you know, the proper deal. Um, and they do them in just these beautiful finishes, you know, like, I don't know how many layers of lacquer they put on them, but I mean, the, just the, sh the finish is unbelievable. They're very um, kind of personalized and, um, you know, all the wood grain is unique and things like that. They're, they're really nice, but they're kind of starting from three and a half grand up to whatever you want to spend, really, depending on how many drums you add to it. Is that in new um, prices? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so I'd always wanted one. And just last year, um, December last year, I got I got in touch with a guy on Facebook Marketplace because I'm always on <laughs> always on Marketplace uh, looking at stuff. And uh, he had one for sale, and the pictures weren't great, but it was like it was the right sizes. It was you know 20 inch bass drum which I wanted. It was a 10, 12, 14, so nice kind of fusion kit. Um, you know, play it with anything. Like you, you could take it to any gig, and it's not going to be out of place. Um, so I, I messaged him, and I think I think it was up for you know three grand. And I, and it was in Scotland. It was Glasgow, which I'm in, I'm in Birmingham. So you know, Glasgow is I think it was Glasgow. It was it might have been Edinburgh. But I think it was Glasgow. It was you know it's a good like six hour drive or whatever it is. Um, it, a lot of money to get up there. You know, you got a mm -hmm. couple of tanks of fuel or whatever, and an overnight stay probably things like that. So I tried to get him down a little bit. I think I offered him two and a half grand. And this was just with shells. I mean, no snare drum, no hardware, no cymbals, nothing. Just literally four shells. Um, and he just wouldn't budge. And like, I, w I remember being up in Sheffield with my girlfriend at the time, actually. And um, I was even like thinking, well, Sheffield, I'm like, I'm like halfway there nearly. I'll just <laughs> go from Sheffield. Um, I was ready, ready to ready to do it. And uh, it just wouldn't move on it. And eventually I just thought, I, I need to feel like I'm getting a good deal because this is a one in a life, once in a lifetime purchase. It's the kit I'm going to keep forever. You know, I want to get it right. And there was one thing about it that I wasn't quite sure about, which was the fact that it was the semi-gloss rather than the high gloss finish okay. so it wasn't like the really shiny one which i quite like to be fair um if you're going to have a really flashy kit you want it to be you know sparkly don't you, you know what <laughs> yeah. what um so there was kind of just that in the back of my mind um and i just wasn't getting the communication i needed really to feel like i was getting a good deal so after that i was kind of i was almost a bit annoyed it was like because i remember even getting to the point where i asked him to like knock 50 pound off and he wouldn't do it and i was just like you know I mean, come on like do something you know maybe yeah. feel like i'm getting a that's deal. the game you have to the game. exactly you, you know like, you feel like they're yeah. getting you know a, a good um a good deal so so after that i was kind of thinking you know just uh, it's really annoying so um i was also you know I'd, I'd, I'd actually had a little bit of time off youtube in lockdown because um uh, my girlfriend and i lived in a one-bedroom flat during lockdown so i didn't have a kit for like eight months i couldn't play at all um yeah, I had a kit at my parents. Um, where Isn't I that where you pull out like Wilcoxon and stick control and all of that? And a little pound <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah. I mean, it, ideally, that. it is. And you might, <laughs> I could do like four hours of practice pad every day, but then you do five minutes and go, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and also, like, all my work had stopped, you know. I mean, I remember because um, my birthday's in March, it's like March 14th, and lockdown was announced, I think, on the 19th. So we'd gone to Oxford for my birthday for the day, you know, day out as a gift from me or whatever. And we were in Oxford, and I remember we got on the park and ride thing. We we're sitting sitting on this park and ride bus after we'd le left the car in a car park, and like my phone just started lighting up. All my gigs were being cancelled. It was like yeah. <laughs> it was like on my birthday, and I was losing like you know hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of work over the yeah. next few months. It was like this has been pulled. This has been pulled. And it was like it was just getting you know getting worse and so it was a bit, bit pre-apocalyptic it was a little bit yeah and and uh basically i lived with my parents at the time and as i said i had my kit there um you know my, i had two kits i think and one for gigs one for one for practice um it's when i had the 50s premier kit actually you may have seen the the mold sparkle as i as i affectionately named it yeah. um uh and uh i had to basically either move in with my girlfriend in her flat or not see her potentially again <laughs> so yeah. so uh so I, I moved in um as you would um and but all i could take was a practice pad because you know one bedroom flat uh second floor and um so yeah i had i had just a pad and i mean there are some videos on the channel that i released over that time where it's like here's a how to do a single stroke roll here's how to yeah. do a double stroke roll and you know i'd set up my little like blue light in the background and you know tried to film it all nice but realistically it's it's 
a bit dry, you know. Um, but it was the best I could do with the situation, and the, yeah. the hair is ridiculous. Everybody just well. sort of managed with what they had, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was really, it was really hard, and it was, it was difficult to, you know, have any sort of enthusiasm to do it because it was like you spend all this work, you move all the furniture out of the living room of the flat, <laughs> and you got, you know, there's nothing to do, and then you do it. You spend hours, edit it, whatever, throw it up on YouTube. You know, fifty views disappears off the face of the earth. Start yeah. again, and it's like. You know, it's really hard to continue to be enthusiastic about it. But yeah. to kind of tie it back to the series, so kind of over, when we moved into this house where we are now, I got this. This is the, the master bedroom of the house. Is my studio, which is great. Um, uh, and and I kind of started building this room as I want it. You know, it's always evolving. It's kind of getting there now. It's a complete mess actually now. Um, uh, to be honest, and my kit isn't even there. It's all it's all in cases. Right. Um, but. You know, it, it is what it is, and, and and I kind of was working out again what sort of content I wanted to do and make. Um, and I, when I got the idea for this Sona series, um, it, it just kind of made sense that that's something I'm getting my teeth into for probably six to twelve months. You know, and uh, um, to answer your question, sorry, I started with um, it was a Premier Olympic marching snare and a pair of cracked Minor Waker hi hats, which I'd had for years, both of which yep. had been given to me as well. Um, yeah, uh, so that was what I started with. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. that's kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel and then filling the barrel with gold. Yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, 62 quid I got on eBay for the yeah. two. <laughs> um, so you legitimately traded that up to some very nice gear. You yeah. didn't, there, there weren't any external inputs into the process, were there? I mean, you I literally know. managed to, to no, trade it up. Basically, it went from, um, it went from those two, so I got 62 quid, um, and then I bought a Roland TD3 um, for parts, um, lo very local to my house, actually. Um, it was in Droitwich, which is just by the motorway. Um, and I paid like 40 quid. I can't remember exactly, but it was like 40, £42 pound or something like that, £45. Pound. Um, and I parted it out. Basically, I sold the brain. I sold the, it had a bass drum pedal with it. I sold the, the bass drum trigger, you know, all the tom pads. It had a couple of cymbals. I think the CY8 ones or whatever they are. And all, for the whole lot, I can't remember what I got. But, but, but I think it had a drum stall with it as well. It had like a few bits, but it wasn't enough for a whole kit. Um, and basically, with the profit of that and um, and the other bits, I ended up with £152, I think it was, or something like that, £155. And, um, and I got dead lucky then, because I saw a Pearl... I think it was an export or something like that. It was a nice Pearl kit. It's on the, it's on the series. Episode 3, it will be. Um, I, saw that, I saw that for sale in Cardiff. And it was like immaculate, never been gigged. It had the extra tom with it, if I remember. I think it did, or maybe it didn't. I anyway, think it did, like, yeah. Maybe that it did, well. yeah. It was like 22, 12, 13, 16, matching snare drum. It might have had a 10, I can't remember. And a full set of, um, uh, I can't remember what symbols. I think there was ZBTs, symbol bag. I can't remember that cases, but yeah, you know, it was like, it was serious. It had the whole stuff, wasn't it? it was, and that was sort yeah. of like. It was a um, vision, that was it. It was a, it was a vision, uh, pearl vision fade. Yeah. It's um, like okay. good beginner kit sort yeah. of level with the with the nice uh, sort of GP symbol. Yeah, yeah. What's the uh, polite term? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like kind of the, the kind of lowest that Zildjian do that are still kind of giggable, really. Um, you know, yeah. and uh, and, a, and a guy basically on eBay, I put the kit up and the kit was like really nice. And, I, and they're, they're actually more expensive than I realized when I when I Googled the price after I picked it up. Um, and so I thought, like, I saw what the shell packs were going for when it was like, I don't know, like four fifty, like with hardware, because you get really nice pearl hardware. In fact, I've, I've still got one of the stands. Uh, might, see the one in the corner of the boom stand? That might yeah. have been that kit or another The hardware one. is that, great. Pearl it's hardware. that same hardware. Anyway. It's nice. And it was obviously a Mac. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think I put the shell pack up for like 450 or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but basically, a guy gave me like 500 600 quid for the lot basically so i went from 150 to like five six hundred pound yeah really quickly and it a nice like, nice boost yeah exactly and, and then you've got money to play with because then you can get a decent kit <laughs> you know yeah. um so i was expecting to have to do a few of these kind of like you know here's part of a Roland td3 and here's you know some other thing you know um but actually that got me to a serious like reasonable stage quite quickly so that was a surprise um and then from there uh that's when i got the i got this this kit with like 14 istanbul agop symbols um and it was it was on the, it, the weird bit was that it was on ebay and that it was an auction 
Mm-hmm. Um, because normally, if I get a bargain, it's a buy it now. Every time, yeah. the way I'd search if you're looking for a bargain on eBay is go um, a recently listed, like most you know, like most recently listed, and go for buy it now or best offer. Because if you've got an auction, obviously the price is going to go up. But if you've got a buy it now, best offer. If you're the first to see it and it's cheap, then you've got the best chance, you know. So, yeah. but this one was a this was an auction, and it was a it was a cheap kit like really cheap, horrible, like, and I don't mean horrible as in some cheap kits are nice. Like this had been ruined, <laughs> like they the thumb holders off it. It was, I think the wrap was a bit, you know, warped, like it had been left by a radiator um, and it, you know, melts the glue and all that. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was at this house. Um, unfortunately, somebody's, somebody's uh, dad had passed away and um, he was a, you know, bedroom drummer, loved it, never gigged, but just loved it, loved drums, bought everything brand new from, um, from a music shop in Birmingham. Um, and, uh, I got there and, and the pictures weren't great. I mean, you can see the pictures in the video series if anyone wants to check it out, but like the, I got the pictures straight from the eBay listing and it's kind of like, you have to really look and go, there's a pair of Istanbul hi hats in that corner, like on the floor, yeah. you know, there's, there's this, there's, I'm sure that's a Ludwig snare drum, like all this stuff, you know, um, or whatever it was. And I got there and it, and I turned up <laughs> at the time my car was in for, um, an engine rebuild. So I'd borrowed my, my mom's Picasso, um, right. Uh, Citroen Picasso, quite a big car, you know, quite square, <laughs> yeah. like a little van, really. I turned up and the, the woman went, is that, is that all like the only car you've got? I was like, yeah, what do you mean? She was like, you ain't going to get it in there. I was like, I, I, no, I will. Don't worry. I will. It's fine. And, uh, you've been there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I actually had, um, I had some filming gear in the car as well. I had my cinema camera and you know, loads of stands and stuff. So I did actually have some stuff in the car to be fair. But I was like, no, I'm using the front seat. It's fine. I'll get it. I'll get it done. And, um, and she, I mean, she was, she was almost right. Uh, I did have to put, you know, a floor tom on the passenger seat and all that stuff, yeah. but, but it was just unbelievable. I, I paid, um, I think it was 350 quid for this lot, for the lot of stuff. And the, the mad bit was that somebody else had bid and then they withdrew, withdrew their bid last minute. Okay. I mean, for reasons I don't understand, like one of those symbols was worth 300 quid, you know, yeah. like you could have picked one of any three, sim- you know, out of the 14 that were worth sort of 250, 300 pounds. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember what the snare drum was, but it was a, it was nice. Um, and uh, it was, yeah, I'm sure it was a Ludwig. Uh, so what's the other? So much equipment. So, so it was, I mean, it was a really like, you were extremely fortuitous. Yeah. I, mean, I, I kind of like to sort of... Um, bring up the thing of like hey you know any of you people out there who who kind of think oh i i somehow need better gear or whatever there is a, a little avenue that if you can spend your time looking at these various online marketplaces and yeah. you know maybe a little bit of luck is involved definitely. But yeah you but can you definitely only, improve you only your circumstances through trade yeah exactly i mean you only get the look by putting in the time you know because mm-hmm. um you've got to be first to see it basically all the time you've got to be first to see it and um I mean, I'm not really looking at the moment, um, you know, but normally like at, back then I was, um, and this is only, I say back then, earlier in the year, I would be on eBay four or five times a day. And it doesn't take long to be fair. Like all you have to do is go, you know, refresh the most recent listed and make sure it's on buy it now, best offer. You know, you have a couple of searches that you do and that's it. You know, like you, you just refresh it, have a look at the top five, 10 listings and but realize you've seen the rest of them already. And that's it. So probably spend like, you know, a couple of minutes, um, and I'd be doing it while I was in the queue at Sainsbury's or when I was, you know, just waiting for some food or what, you know, whatever it was. Um, yeah. so it's not like you have to sit there and like really trawl the net all the time. Um, yeah. so, you know, there is, there is stuff out there for sure. There's good um, stuff out there. Cause, um, yeah. yeah, lately, I mean, the sort of general, yeah, the general sort of price of stuff obviously is, is going up and, and yeah, the, the, the cheapy, kits aren't quite as easy to find as they used to. Um, And even like, because I I try and help students who, you know, want to get something playable and, you know, they don't have a huge budget or the parents aren't really wanting to commit a huge investment. And uh, yeah, it's not quite as easy to find the cheaper kits as it was, but there are there there are bargains out there to be had. So tell so where did you you so where did you end up? So we we were dreaming of the sort of Rolls Royce of drums, really. Yeah, that's not a primitive uh, way yeah, to I describe it. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, and you ended up sort of with a slightly different outcome. But in a way, <laughs> to me, it it seemed like a better outcome. I was really pleased so. to see how things worked out. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, so basically, I carried on. I I sold all that stuff. 
I had another couple of deals. I can't remember what they were now. <laughs> I think there's another Pearl Export Kit. There's always a Pearl Export Kit in there somewhere. Um, and uh, yeah, basically, I'd got to a, a fair chunk of my what I needed. My, my goal was to, to save three grand, basically 3,000 quid, because I thought uh, with 3,000 pound, I can, I can find a good used SQ2. You know, um, I didn't really want to buy a brand new one. I don't really buy a brand new anything. I, I just think it's a waste of money. Particularly no, with drums, when there's no electronics, there's no moving parts. Like, it is what you get. It's not like buying a car where there could be hidden this or hidden that. You know, like, it's... Look at it. Yeah, and it there's you know, nothing it really to go wrong with the thing. No, exactly. You know, it's like buying furniture or something, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I got to a couple of grand, basically. Um, about two-thirds of the way there. And... I was on marketplace again uh while I was actually I was I was uh, a local uh bouldering center I do a lot of lot of bouldering lot of climbing um and uh I had my phone with me and I was I was on marketplace and I saw this uh I saw this kit and it was it, it was like a it was really high end um had a full set of Zildjian A customs with it um I already had a set of A customs at the time from another deal <laughs> mm -hmm. um and um there's a photo somewhere I think I put it on facebook or instagram of this wall of symbols that i had at one point from all the deals because while they're waiting to be sold i just had like i had like 30 or 40 symbols i think there's a youtube short that's what it is i did it as a youtube short and i list all the symbols <laughs> it's mad yeah. um including my own as well and so th there was this kit and it was a tama star classic or tama star classic as um i keep being told it's pronounced is it supposed um, to be tama it's meant to be tama a guy oh, commented nice. on my youtube channel the other week and he was like oh yeah famous japanese brand tama I was like, Tama. well, Tama, Tama is how the Americans pronounce it, which yeah. is fine. But, you know, am I meant they to pronounce things pronounce it like an American, in a Japanese name? I how do know. the Japanese pronounce it then? I don't know. I have no idea. But anyway. Tama. Yeah, I call them Tamas. They're Tamas. We're in England now. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't, it doesn't if, really If matter. there are any Japanese people watching, please let us know. Please let us know, yeah. Because yeah. I'm sure I'll be wrong anyway, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah. point being a different wrong. <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> I might as well be my own wrong. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so, yeah, it was a Star Classic, uh, which, if, again, for the others of you who don't know, that's one of, uh, one of Tama's higher-end kits. I don't know what the top of the range one is, but... I, I'm sure they do a few anyway, yeah. but it's in the, it's 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 probably not quite in the same ballpark as an SQ2. Um, but I couldn't really tell you why. I mean, the shells are probably in nicer quality. The hardware is probably as nice. It it's just that it's not quite as well. You, I think you're paying for the name a little bit with Sona, really. Yeah. Um, and you know, there's probably a little bit more in terms of like the whole custom shell thing and all that. You know, the going on. Yeah. I think a lot um, of that is aesthetic. I'm I'm yeah. becoming yeah. increasingly skeptical that there's a really significant difference between like a stage custom and anything more expensive. Yeah. Um in terms of like, you know, if you're blindly listening to the thing. Definitely. I'm yeah. very skeptical about the wood and all yeah. of this. Yeah. I know. I mean drums are being it's hard to them. test. How, yeah. how would you even test it? Because you'd have to get identical kits with everything exactly the same except the yeah. wood and yeah i don't know how would you even test it and, and there's lots of know. like blind tests and stuff that people have done yeah um, where they can't tell the drumio did one actually that i quite enjoy because uh, i like throwing that up at people where a bunch of fairly you know qualified people couldn't tell the difference between zildjian's pisces and sabians in a blind test they couldn't tell the difference between a wood and a metal snare in a blind test yeah yeah by exactly. the by. so it's the beauty of the thing i think you know yeah i think it's you know you're drawn to certain things aren't you and um i tend to be drawn to anything that's a little bit unusual um and uh this uh star classic kit when i saw it was a bit unusual because it's in a, a finish called something like arctic blue oyster um which is like a pale blue um kind of well oyster finish it's, it's hard to explain it looks a little bit vintage it looks very kind of beachy <laughs> um yeah. in terms of you know kind of yeah you'd see it on the beach playing some nice kind of chilled out music um beach boys Obviously. yeah beach boys yeah um and it, it came with as a full set of zildjian a customs it had a ludwig black magic snare drum uh not a black not a black beauty a uh, different model uh 13 by 7 um and it had oh that's it <laughs> yeah so initially i was going to buy the i was looking at buying the kit off him and, and the symbols and then we couldn't quite work out a price uh bearing in mind i had a budget of a couple of grand um, but obviously I was trying to work out what I could make on it because it was a lot of money to invest and it was down mm -hmm. in, um, 
uh, where was it now? Western Supermay, I think it was. So it was it, like a couple of hours each way. It was, you know, not like a throwaway, I'll just go and have a look at it. Uh, it was kind of half a day. So uh, I basically kept talking to him and trying to work out what we could do. And then he said, oh, I've got some recording stuff as well for sale. I was like, okay, how much do you want for the lot? Asked him what it was. Um, and he had a 12 channel Ulto mixing desk, which is, you know, kind of reasonable live uh, mixing desk. Nothing too crazy, but, uh, you know, de definitely not like really cheap. Uh, some XLRs and a set of cheap drum mics, to be fair. Um, mm -hmm. the T-bone ones or whatever they're called, you know, they're okay. Uh, very cheap, but they'll, you know, it's a full kit of mics in yeah. a box. Nice, nice for kind of, you know, just getting started with. And, and a couple of other bits as well with it. And the, the kit had cases with it as well. Not the best cases, but it had some cases with it. And uh, so I went to pick it up. I, I arranged to pay £2,050 for the whole lot. And um, yeah, I, I, I got it home and I thought, great, I'll set it up. I'd move my um, white kit, my Carrera drums kit, which, which I'd used on the channel a lot, which is actually stacked in that corner at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'd move that out of the way and, and set this kit up. And I, start, I sat down to play it and I was like, I'm not really a, I'm not really a Tama fan, to be honest. I, I've always, I don't know what it is, you know, I I've had a few conversations with people who have like been really Tama orientated and they, they've just, you know, <laughs> wax lyrical about how much better they are than everything else. And I think it's just put me off a little bit and it's, yeah. you know, it's nothing to do with the kits. It's like, yeah. it's just a few conversations I've had. So I was a bit kind of like, oh, you know, okay, I'll give it a go. And I started playing on it. I was like, wow, like this is, this is a serious thing, you know, and, and it had been sitting in this guy's house for a while. It had the original skins on it. It never gigged it, bought it brand new in lockdown. And it, you know, it wasn't really tuned properly. It was just kind of, you know, and the, the creases have been taken out of the skins yep. and it's just kind of low and fat. <laughs> okay. But it yep. just had this kind of tone to it that was, that just blew my other kit out of the water, really. Just completely like, oh, okay, well, that's, that's that ruin then. Yeah. And I just, I got to, a, I got thinking about it and, and I was like, I just don't think I can sell this because one of my worries that I would have had with an SQ2 would have been that I would take it out on a gig, somebody would fall over it, and it, I'd be like just devastated. Yeah. You'd just be worried about it all the time. You can't enjoy playing a thing like that, really. Exactly, exactly. And and you know some of the gigs I do. I mean, I'm out. I've, I've done. I counted yesterday. This by the end of this year, I've done 119 dates this year, oh, and it's hey. quite a variety of stuff that I do. Um, and you know it's not always like <laughs> in fact it's often not like big theaters or like you know it's it's often you know in the corner of some some place where the only thing stopping an audience member getting on the stage is maybe a bit of red rope or, or possibly yeah. even less than that you know i was possibly. gonna say it was, was whether they they've had one more pint or not exactly not and I had, had it, I had somebody fall into my pearl midtown kit before and totally yeah. wipe it out um yeah. that place uh, not too far from here just totally took the kit out like just wiped it out um yeah. and you know it worried me and obviously i wouldn't take it to that place i wouldn't take it somewhere like that but still you never know so the more i got thinking about this tama kit i was like well these are about 1800 quid no that it's a it's kind of hard you know half the price or, or just a bit more and this was so nice um and i, I just started thinking more about really why i wanted an sq2 and and actually i really liked this and i loved the finish and i'd never seen one before and, and i looked online there was one other for sale in the uk so it's like mm -hmm. you know there's not many of them about and it just looked the part and, and uh, part of my um kind of aesthetic that, I've, that i have on my channel is um generally color scheme wise and i've kind of done this by accident but there's always an element of blue mm -hmm. and then tends to be black and white that tends to be kind of the color scheme yeah. um, kind of cool tones really <laughs> and uh and it just fit like it just looked the part in the studio you know with a i got like a blue light over there that, that comes on and uh you know it just looked right so i just thought yeah like maybe then maybe i'll keep it and then i was looking at the series thinking well that's totally destroyed the budget really um, <laughs> Yeah, I'd sort of worked out that if I sold everything apart from the three shells, which was twenty-two by sixteen, no, yeah, twenty-two by sixteen bass drum, uh, twelve by nine, I think it is, and a sixteen by sixteen uh, floor tom. If I sold everything, I worked out it would owe me about six hundred pound. Yeah, which you know, for for a eighteen hundred pound shell pack that's got zero marks on it, I mean, it's never been gigged. Fantastic. It's, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a third of the price, so. Uh, I, I then kind of decided to <laughs> that I'd be better off keeping it, basically. And uh, that if I were to gig it, which I have, 
that it, I would be very protective of it, but it, it owes me six hundred pound. It doesn't owe me three and a half grand. Yeah, and it's all, also it's it's a kit with a wrap. It's it's not the same, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's a bit more sturdy and yeah, it's a th- it's a tool that you can use even you love yeah. the thing. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. I, uh, yeah, because I was thinking that also, like, this very posh kits. I don't know, it's a bit, yeah, that, you don't want to be that precious about it. You know, it's not Stradivarius. No, exactly. Exactly. And, yeah. and I like I like to see stuff being used, you know, like, uh, I really yeah. do. It's, uh, I've, you know, I've got a Pearl Midtown kit that I say that I use for most of my gigs. A uh, little 16-inch bass drum, 10-inch high tom, uh, 13 by 11 floor tom. It's great. And when it's mic'd up, it sounds so punchy. And I get yeah. so many comments from sound engineers saying, like, that's like, you know, that's like the best sounding kit we've had all day, you know, or whatever, um, if you do, like, festivals and things. And uh, and it always baffles me because it's like, this is just the smallest kit in the world. Yeah. And it, you know like how a- to tune the thing. Yeah, I think so. You know, it owes me, like, 150 quid, and it's got <laughs> skins on it. Yeah. And it's like it is you know there's a certain element of the equipment is like we said earlier it, it is a bit you know up in the air uh, it's it's know. aesthetic it is an aesthetic thing equipment and i think that's valuable because yeah, it before is. i get flamed yeah. or whatever but <laughs> the aesthetic of the thing is valuable if you feel something that you like the uh the way it looks the colors the feel there's there's a vibe about my my sort of pro level kit i mean even it's not it wasn't that expensive but it's a pile masters that oh, when i bought it i got some money from uh like a car accident someone smashed my car oh, wow. and then i suddenly had a pile of cash and i had this like battered old kit and i thought right oh no i was recording i was like full-time recording and i was doing wow. a lot of my own sessions and um I thought, no, I need a proper kit here. And I went into a drum shop. I was in Eastbourne at the time. And I thought, oh, I like the colour of that one. How much is that? And yeah. I bought it. That was it. And it was a Pearl. And I didn't realise at the time, because I wasn't that gear orientated, that Pearl was like the most uncool brand that you could I have. And really, I should have wanted a, a Ludwig <laughs> or something. So I always thought like Pearl was like the Ibanez of drums. Yeah. Like, as in, it's a bit generic. And yeah. The drums that always made me sort of go, ooh, were, were Yamahas, whenever I thought. But really? I, See, I'm I the thought, opposite of that. I was going to say, I, I'm, um, I, like, I've never wanted a Yamaha kit, which is I just, mad. The, the, Whenever I've sort of thought, oh, I like those drums. They sound good. It always turns out to be a Yamaha for some reason. Okay. But I do think it's 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 a it's a trick of the mind it's a sort of magic occult thing yeah. and so i've had a sw- weird relationship with the thing where i thought oh i bought this kind of uncool kit but i actually really like it it's also 20 uh you know 20 12 14 whatever oh it's got a 10 i don't use the 10 because i think there's too many toms so yeah, i'm yeah. a bit old-fashioned yeah and uh i had the edges done by a famous edge doing guy uh, you know gary oh, well. noonan cut the edges for me at some point to make it wow. vintagey round instead of sharp edges and i got rid of the heavy um you know, um, oh God, I've got the word now. You know, I, I put normal, um, the hoops, you know, there's the, the um, cast iron hoops or whatever. Yeah, the ones. Die cast, that's it. Most yeah. of my brain's just gone there. So I took off the die cast hoops because they're, so I'm, because I'm a bit old fart and I, I like things to sound a bit older. So it was sort of vintageified a little bit. But I, yeah, I don't think, you know, there's that part of me that goes, oh, I want a, a, a 1960s Ludwig kit or something. But, um, no, it's all just put some heads on and learn how to tune the thing and yeah. you're all the same at the end of the day. And 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 all that nuance and stuff that you hear when you hear that brass snare or whatever, oh, it's like this. If you're playing in a rock and roll band, uh, you can't hear the difference between two snare drums. No. Uh, and you're going to muffle the thing. You could, yeah. You could get, yeah. So, I know. So, yeah. I, you know, and it's cool if you find a thing that you love and, you know, like you say, you'd sat with that tummer kit and it just sounded beautiful to you. And the the look of it was right and everything. So that you know, it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, I think when when people get a bit too carried away with that. So <laughs> basically, what I'm saying is, yeah. if you do have a you know stage custom or whatever is the equivalent, uh, you know the the export now or whatever, that's a perfectly good kit. Yeah. You don't have to get something else. No, that's that's very true. You know, it's yeah, it's an interesting one, and I, I I've been meaning actually for a while to do a video about the whole chain of what makes the sound that you get. So uh, I've massively into recording um, as of sort of over the last couple of years. I've really got into recording, really got into microphones, you know, really mm-hmm. got into, um, you know, I've started um, mixing. I've got Logic Pro on my iPad recently and I've, I've really got into learning about, you know, EQing and cutting and things like that. And, uh, you know, nice, nice reverbs or whatever. And I've been meaning to make a video for a while about just that whole chain of what produces the sound from the, from the stick hitting the, the drum to what you yeah. hear. And yep. if you think about all the different steps of it, 
the drums are one key element of that but you've got even down to the type of sticks that you use mm-hmm. then you've got the skins then you've got the drums i yeah. mean fundamentally you've got the player <laughs> which is yeah. kind of the biggest part by it by a long way but then you've even got you know then you've got the microphones which is a huge like hugely underrated part i think in, yeah. you know from what i've seen and you know I'll, I'll really get into the difference in microphones and when when you hear a great mic next to a cheap mic well i say cheap not necessarily a, a, i should say a, a kind of lesser lesser mic rather than a mm-hmm. cheap one. um but you know you hear the difference it's it's mad and then you, you know you've got the leads making sure you're not using like rubbish leads yeah. and you've got your interface or you know your mixer or whatever you're using uh and then you've got how you actually process it and, and eq it and, yeah. and all that and then you've got obviously you know how you export it and then you've got the platform that you upload it to and finally the thing that they're the person is listening to it on you know yeah, and fundamentally most people are listening on their mobile phone or on them on their mac or whatever and it's it's ridiculous really because <laughs> you know it is it's crazy i think like yeah. the room is is probably the biggest thing the room sorry um, i should have back with the room yeah. yeah yeah and then then the heads yeah the, the the drums how well they're tuned and and how you hit them but all, all the actual moving air stuff is much more important i think than any of the other stuff yeah um but yeah so, so like any kind of mic comparison stuff that's great i'll, I'll be watching that because yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't know it might that's the thing my my level of uh experience is in the sort of um doubling around area of things so i've done full-time recording as a job but in a slightly mad scenario yeah. and so i'm very self-taught with things um and yeah i'm just i'm increasingly suspicious that a lot of these nuances and differences are they're either they're just too subtle that they really matter so it's like if you're um you know i'm someone if i have to drink some wine i'll go uh right that's a oh that's a nice wine that's not a nice (laughs) wine and i'm satisfied with that sort of level of distinction yeah so you could get into all those people who know it's got a hint of blueberries and it was grown on the south side of a mountain (laughs) yeah yeah um but you know whether those nuances are really necessary so yeah if maybe yeah i don't know i I need to see i'd need to see a lot of people successfully um succeeding with the blind tests yeah um, definitely and i think i've seen the blind test yeah most people can't tell yeah whatever the blind test is generally it's it's, you know it's madness i mean i think for me i tend to as i'm drawn to slightly unusual things and i'll i'll get stuff because i like it rather than exactly for its you know um kind of technical merits you know yeah. I mean, the like, you like it thing is really important that's the thing oh yeah massively yeah. i mean like and also at a point where i'm actually everything i do buy now i'm buying it as like this is the best one that i th- this is what i think is the best one for me i'm mm-hmm. never going to sell it like i've got um behind me there's a there's a very long microphone that's a sennheiser 441 yeah. and that was recommended to me as like oh if you want a really good snare mic have a look at a 441 Yep. And uh, and I looked and they're like nine hundred pounds. <laughs> I was like, oh, so I got on eBay and you know as usual I started hunting them down. I, I listened to the, some on YouTube and comparisons with like fifty sevens and fifty eights and you know Audix mics and different things. And um, and you know again, if I was to blindly hear them, I wouldn't probably be able to tell you the difference. But the look of it as well, it's got this kind of very sixties kind of Concord esque sort of design and just the feel of it and the weight of it and all the different you know it's got a little switch on it for the eq and a high yeah. boost and all this and i just i just fell in love with the sort of design and this the whole kind of thing of it and also the kind of thought that uh, you know being into stuff like that i've met people who i gig with and they'll be like they know i'm really into microphones now it's like they know i really do care at least yeah. even if it's a bit misplaced in terms of like oh i've actually bought this partly because i think it looks really cool <laughs> yeah. um and because it's so big that you can't actually put it really where you want it because uh, <laughs> is ridiculous yeah um, and you know it's in the way of the tub or whatever but i think that's hilarious I, you know yeah. I love but like it, it shows that i'm interested and that i care about it at the very yeah. least uh rather than if i just kind of if i just bought a generic set you know because yeah. like, no, I, I think it's really really annoying. important that that's the thing so uh, and uh I get, I get, you know this is like because i think there's a mystical uh sort of element to all of that that something that there's not anything intrinsically in the mic itself that somehow the sound of that mic because if you're recording just the drums on their own maybe that's a thing but if you decide to make some music and you've got bass yeah. and keyboards and guitars and da 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 
then, you know, every record that we've listened to, someone's recorded like a 57 and uh, whatever yeah. it is, you know, with a, a Luddy yeah. 400 uh, <laughs> yeah. on there. And, you know, there's been a certain setup of things. And so every record that we ever listen, or, you know, you listen to like ancient 60s recordings where, you know, all that Rolling Stone stuff, there's one, some a condenser mic above the middle of the kit. And that's it. Oh, I mean, I record everything with just a mono mic and a, and a bass drum mic. And, um, yeah, you just go, oh, well, you know, we loved all that stuff anyway. You know, yeah, did, exactly. Did they, they, but it was a set of, you know, kind of cool, funky things. But, you know, like when they recorded Black Sabbath, uh, they didn't have half the technology that we have uh, now. But it sounded it. quite good. And so, but the mystical nature of that you found that Sennheiser mic and it's just the best snare drum mic and all of that as a sort of, yeah, to me, uh, the abstractness of that is is cool yeah. and beautiful and that is valuable so yeah, yeah when i say oh well it, you know it's just a mic at the end of the day i think that those those values that we add to it is what gives it meaning yeah definitely and, and I, it... I also got it i also managed to find that one specifically a really good price and i can't remember if it was that mic or one of my tom mics but i got it from a second hand shop in spain on ebay <laughs> all right okay and uh I'm sure, I'm sure, i think it was the 441 actually and um and it was one of these and it was just again it was like just been listed you know and it was it was one of these i was sitting there i, I remember actually i got home from a gig it was late at night and i was like sit up and watch a bit of tv and have a decaf coffee and a you know bag of crisps before i go to bed after a gig and uh and i was sitting there and i saw this mic come up and i think it was like 350 quid and you use they're normally about 600 -ish, yep. you know normally a bit more and it was like if i don't buy this now it will be gone in the morning like 100 percent, it'll be gone and i just just pressed go on it and that was it you know but like the whole story of it you know uh i mean i've got a couple of sm57s as well they're brilliant yeah. i use them for gigs i don't take the 441 out yeah. um the first time i did somebody went oh they're like a thousand quid aren't they and i thought this is never leaving the house again yeah, no, definitely not. <laughs> no. um but you know like it's got a bit of a story to it and as i say i just i just kind of like it and um yeah it's it's got because you got a pair of 421s for the toms as well didn't you Four two ones, yeah. I've got yeah. the Mark One four two. You're not taking those out either, because they're, they're no, they don't, they don't come out. They don't come out. Yeah, I've also yeah. my favourite thing that I've got, which isn't here at the moment. I've lent it to a friend of mine. Is a Coles four zero three eight ribbon Ooh, mine, very um, nice. Yeah, which um, again I got at a really good price. Um, I paid four hundred and twenty quid for it, second hand, broken from a cash converters in London. Oh wow! Okay, on eBay, um, and uh, I actually bid for that one. And it was like there aren't many people willing to bid 400 pound plus on a broken microphone yeah. but um, i'd actually phoned coles the manufacturer uh before i bought it and said how much worst case to fix it and they said 119 pound plus vat oh wow okay okay I'm making note of and, that, yeah. yeah 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 and so um i'd worked out all in it was going to be about 560 pound mm -hmm. um and these are like a thousand and sixty quid new because it came yeah. with the adapter and everything in the case um okay so I was like, well, well, there you go. You know, it's like, why would I not buy that? And and a lot of the stuff I tend to buy, um, I, I don't like buying anything I'll lose money on as well. You know, so I spend a lot of money on equipment. But if I wanted to put any any part of it back on eBay right now, I'd get my money back. Like, yeah. you know, nearly everything, maybe not the electronic stuff, because that's just yeah. the nature of technology. But mm -hmm. certainly things like vintage microphones or drums or whatever, cymbals, I've always paid yeah. less than I should. And I think that's really important, you know, because you you can then spend more money on equipment without it actually affecting you in that same way. Like if I need yeah. money, fine, I'll sell a microphone. But that is a, a benefit, yeah, in a way, a benefit of high-end equipment that it has a more predictable sort of value. So if you have the opportunity yeah. to sort of invest in the first place, you are sort of putting the money, you're exchanging the money for a thing, yeah. and then the thing can be exchanged back into money. So exactly. That it's, yeah, if you've got that, that little bit of cash to start with, it's quite a good idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm to be able to explore different bits of equipment when you get stuff that's solid. And yeah, you're better off like spending a couple of hundred quid on a, a used, well known mic, for instance, that you want to play around with than go to a shop and buy a brand new thing yeah. from some company that you don't know it's going to be worth, you know, a quarter of that six yeah, months definitely. later. Definitely. That's it. I've always thought like, I mean, you know, money in the bank is one thing, but it's actually, while it's sitting there, it's just a number on a screen and it's no use to me, <laughs> you yeah. know. So, um obviously it would be a use to me if like you needed a new roof or something on the house but you yeah. know but then you know you can stick it back on the market but you just you know it's like anything I, anything in this room i could sell within three or four days get more than i paid for it 
and you know so no. I, I do try and think about it that way I do, yeah i think i don't know if there's a sort of um because i always feel like i'm not that good at, at the buying and selling stuff i've got a d12 that i want to get rid of and yeah I feel like, oh, i've got to stick it out there it's worth a lot more than i bought it for because I, I, yeah i bought it years and years ago uh before it was a cool thing to have and i've been using it and i just thought i don't really need a bass drum mic that's worth 750 quid and uh, like the the perceived difference of what you get out of it yeah. is like i use um, um an m88 for recording my bass drum um yeah. and uh which in, in the olden days was like the before um before the sm58 was right. the Bayer m88 was like a standard vocal mic you see in the 70s and so and it's a good bass drum mic as well and i got that very cheaply off someone and it's great for bass drum don't need anything else and so i think i've sort of worked through the whole gear wanting gear stuff yeah and so i've got a jazz festival as well and i always wanted a jazz festival and i just think i don't need enjoy anything about this drum for someone <laughs> doesn't do anything for me yeah and yeah. um I just think, why? Why have I got it? So I'm going to get get rid of that as well. Yeah, I think the thing um, is, if you if you've always wanted one, you're probably best to have it, <laughs> and then you can decide work through it. You know, but, yeah. work, but like like I say, spend the time, wait for the right one. You know, pay the right money, and then it doesn't really matter because if you decide after 12 months, you know, actually, I prefer something else. Then fine. You know, you haven't lost any money. You've had the thing. You've scratched the itch, and that's it. You know. Yeah, it's really worth it. That, it's, it's a sort of safe, yeah, it's a safe enough game to play. Yeah. When, or you're getting like good quality stuff. Yeah. So it is worth getting good. Yeah, I, I agree. Definitely get get those things if you want them, um, generally speaking, and experience them. I've got two Supras and an Acrylite, and I can sit there and they're, by accident, I've got two Supras because it's stupid to have two Supras, but. Um, <laughs> You know, but I can then be, I could put like different heads on them and stuff and, and mess about. I've thought of doing some videos like that, but then I get a bit lazy thinking, oh, well, you know, are you going to hear the difference between these two? 170s, 160s, definitely no difference. <laughs> um, the, yeah, and you, a sort of part of me wants to go, okay, let's just get rid of everything except for the Aqualite. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's good enough for just about every everyone else. Yeah, I mean, I, I used to have quite a few snare drums, and I've got two now. I've got I've got this old Yamaha, eighties Yamaha shell. Um, in fact, I'll, let me just quickly show you because it's literally there. One second. Okay, cool. So I've got when you you'll have seen it. So I've got this, which I paid I paid a hundred pound for. And okay. Oh, cool snare really mechanism. That's like the old. Um, <laughs> why has my head gone today? You know, the the there is a sort of uh, Supra version. The oh, Sensi. Oh, yeah, yeah it's sensitive, it's, isn't it? It's a bit like a nine thousand, but it isn't. It's, yeah. It's like a triple O or something. I can't remember what they're yeah. called. Um, and I love this because I paid a hundred quid for it. It's really rough, mm -hmm. but it sounds great when it's tuned properly. Um, and these stick out so much that they bruise your knees every time you play it. As well. <laughs> um, and I just think it's ridiculous that that was even, you know, that somebody actually designed that and that passed every design test that Yamaha had, um, yep. you know, but uh, that's the only Yamaha drum, as I say, I own because um, uh, I love the hardware, but I've never really been drawn to the drums, even though I know they're brilliant. I've just never yeah. really listed after them. Yeah. That, I just, I love it. And I've, I've got that and a Black Panther Pegasus as well, Mapex Black yeah. Panther. Um, okay, yeah. Love the drums. Great for gigs. Yeah. And it's, really, really just, nice. it's just yeah. lovely. Again, I've got it like £100 off the new price, brand new in the box. I think it was. It was somewhere like that. And it's it's just stunning. I think I've got the box under the bed in the next room. But, um, you know, just like, again, the right the right price. Um, and that's all I need. It's like one for gigs, one for practice. Yeah, that's it. I yeah. don't really I mean, care. I've got, you know, I've got my all the snares piled up there. It's just silly. Yeah, it's a nice little, it's a nice display, that is, yeah. Yeah, that's not all my snares either. But, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, uh, you know, so it's like, um, yeah, because I, I don't know. And I, I've just put, like, I've got a, a Gretsch um, Renown, like a jazz kit with 18, 12, 14. And I put all uh, Kofskin heads on. Nice. And well, I love that. I love playing the thing. It's completely useless. I mean, I haven't been gigging enough. But um, I just think if you go into a room and someone breathes in and breathes out again, it's going to change the tuning. <laughs> yeah. And I actually have a dehumidifier. So that's how I change the tuning on the drums. If I, that's if I want them higher, I, I turn on the dehumidifier. But um, yeah, so it's kind of useless in some strange way. But I love the sound of the thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, it's a funny, yeah, it's funny that the gear thing, it's very funny because there is, but it's, it's emotional and it mystical. is emotional. I think yeah. that's great. Like enjoy the emotional side of it. Enjoy yeah. the hunt for it. And yeah. 
because we're in a, we, we're talking about things that aren't, it's not like we're talking about laptops where this one is faster than this one and this one is better. Like there, it is literally, oh, well, I don't like DW. Oh, well, I don't like this. Oh, yeah. I, you know, so, so actually the, the emotional side of it is everything, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah. so if you can enjoy the things that you like, then that's, that's it. Like, doesn't yeah. matter. And when you sit and play the thing, it, it gives you a certain feedback because of that. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's not intrinsic. So if you've got that DW kit and it's the, the absolute most amazing thing you've ever experienced, when I sit behind it, it's just a bunch of wooden cylinders. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And um, yeah. that's it. But that's that's a really nice thing. I, I like that. But people get pissed off, you know, if you say that, I suppose. But um, yeah. no, that's cool. And so you 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 ended up with this, this journey into finding the Tama kit. Yeah. And um, then did I ask? Oh, see, I said Tama now. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah so we've changed now. No, I just don't know. Um, and then you you've got the you've got the electric kit. You've got the uh, Roland. Yeah, I've got a TD thirty into the bargain. Brilliant. And this is kind of. I don't know if I can turn that around there. There we go. There's a TD thirty there. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> and that's cool. I mean, again, I, you, you know, we're sort of we've, we've been talking for a little while, but yeah, that's interesting. It, it's given you an opportunity to sort of up your your sort of practice time and yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and so that's because again, it's another one of those things. That I've I've got something called an ATV kit that I use for teaching, okay. uh, which was some Roland people, and it was a sort of slightly thingy. And I went after lockdown, and I used to be very very anti these things, and now I'm still quite. It's funny. It's one of those things where I'm like, oh, so I don't like practicing on my electric kit very much. Um, yeah. But yeah, what's your experience been like? Uh, it's been really good, actually. I mean, I wanted a TD30 for a long time or something similar, like really like, for that, again, for those of you who don't know, uh, with Roland kits, literally the higher the number, the better it is. So there's TD1, TD3, TD4, whatever. And it goes up to 50, obviously mm -hmm. missing out quite a few numbers in the process. Um, and the TD30 is the one directly below the TD50. Um, it's been around for probably about seven or eight years or maybe longer even. It's not a new kit by any means, but it is really, really good. And um, I'm never planning to gig it, so the TD50 would be massive overkill. Um, uh, to give you an idea of how overkill even the TD30 is, it's got settings on it where you can adjust um, where the bass drum mic is positioned in the bass drum or out of the bass drum, even though it's electronic. Okay, um, right. And what type of uh, uh, dampening you have in the bass drum, being that mm -hmm. it might be a concrete block, I think was one of the options, a oh, pillow okay, yeah. or a blanket or something like that. Uh, you can adjust what sort of room it's in, uh, the size and shape of the room, if the floors are carpeted, if it has curtains, like these are all things you can adjust on it. And it is amazing and it's completely ridiculous. Um, but you know, it, it, and you can even actually, the one I really like is um, you can adjust how much snare buzz the bass drum picks up. Oh, that's nice. Which is great because, like you know, you yeah. can just dial it in and it's like, how real is that? You know, yeah. um, so how, how's the hi-hat? The one thing that always, well, my thing, the hi hat, it, it came as this thing with like a light sensitive thingy, and there's this oh, adjustment, right. wow. and it, it it's quite variable, but it doesn't yeah. it doesn't behave very predictably. So it's almost no, this is good. It's um it's a thirteen inch, so it's quite you know quite realistic size wise, and it moves fairly realistically. I'm just um kind of looking, and it's actually in two pieces rather mm -hmm. than the little kind of cylinder underneath. It's actually two symbols, so they do yeah. sit together properly and it's got a few different connections it's got like one inside and then i think one outside as well so it, it's doing various things i can't tell yeah. you exactly what um but the symbols in general like the ride symbols got two inputs so you get a you get a bell sound you get a uh, edge sound and you get a sort of whatever the middle of the symbols called sound all right cool. symbol sound um uh, so it, they are really you know it, it, you can tell that it's a much higher end kit but basically my my, my reasoning for going for the td30 was that the drums are bit are quite big so the snare drums 12 inches the floor toms 12 inches uh the toms i think are 10 or whatever so it feels like you can space it like a regular kit whereas yeah if you've got a, a, a kind of low-end electronic kit with the small pads you tend to put them right next to each other because yeah. otherwise it feels so ridiculous like there's just this huge gap in the middle and it looks really weird and that sort of you know messes with your mind so with this you actually can space them pretty much like a regular kit um yeah. and mine's got the uh the two high toms and then the two floor toms and the snare drum um bass drum two crashes ride and hats so it's a good setup six shell you know and uh 
it's just great because I aim to do two hours a day practice if I can, and often I can't. I'm, I'm not at home a lot. I, you know, I'm a, I work a lot in London. Do you do like, something every day? I, nah, I, I don't. That, that's always the thing I lecture my students. You know, it's like yeah. if you have my permission to pick up your sticks and do like three paradiddles. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is really good. I think really good advice, and it's just not always possible. Um, no, so I'm not I'm here. Not, but, I don't. I don't do. No, that. no, no. I mean, I really try, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like do, you know, do as I say, not, not as I do. <laughs> well, you know, but, these things. It does work. So when when I I know when I do something every day, it does actually manifest yeah. some sort of different thing. So what are you what are you what are you working on then? I know I know you're a little bit um, limited for time. So maybe give yeah, us no, a bit, bit of insight. Are you good? Yeah, uh, so so basically. Uh, at the moment, I'm playing mainly on the violin. I try and get on the acoustic kit, which is invisible, um, mm -hmm. uh, because it's packed in for cases um, uh, at the moment, because I'm using the Tama for a gig tomorrow, actually, so that's packed up. Uh, but I, so when I when I can, I try and do an hour on the acoustic kit, which I think is really important to get on a, a real kit, as it were. Um, and then I'll try and do an hour on the Roland. Uh, yesterday, I did three hours on the Roland. Uh, amazing, loved it. And uh, to be honest, I've actually just been I've been playing to a load of stuff, which is not something I normally do. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been playing to a load of like nineties, nineties uh, hip hop, and I've actually been working a lot, playing to a lot of stuff like the Prodigy and Pendulum, and trying to finally learn how to use a double bass drum pedal. <laughs> oh, okay, all <laughs> oh, very brave. Yeah, yeah, just it's hard you know, work, isn't it? I, I'm not like a metal fan really, um, but actually, I quite like kind of playing stuff like you know, like electronica stuff, but with a double kick. Like it's just, it's just fun, and it's kind of like a way that I'm. I'm just kind of I've got loads of stuff that I've sort of semi practiced on the acoustic kit and like, you know, licks and chops and whatever and grooves. But actually to sit and play with music on on the electronic, uh, sorry, on the acoustic kit, I've either got to have my amp cranked up, which isn't ideal, yeah. or I've got to put headphones in and then you can't really hear the kit. Yeah, And you're kind of, or, yeah, and then you're not appreciating the sound of the kit, but you are annoying yeah, the neighbours at the same yeah, time. Yeah, well, exactly. Whereas with this, I've got my, I've got a Roland PM100 um, drum monitor right next to me. I can plug, I can plug headphones into the brain of the kit as well so i can have a feed from both if i really want you know uh, just to get a feel of bass through the room or whatever and then actually get you know just a bit of detail and clarity in my headphones so I, i'm doing that i'm using the kit for you know some kind of rudiment stuff but i'm not being too strict with it to be honest i'm, I'm kind of evaluating currently what i want to work on and and actually because i've been i've been really busy this last couple of months uh i'm just trying to enjoy playing as much as i can and yeah i, I mean sometimes we there's a lot yeah. of emphasis on this, like having routines and having to do everything in very sort of military style and record yeah. yourself at the beginning and the end of every practice and set everything to a metronome. But it's quite yeah. nice to just decompress it is. and see what your body wants to work yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and also, like every pretty much every song that you hear, you know, on Spotify or whatever, it's been recorded to a click, you know, unless it's, <laughs> unless it's really old. Uh, and you know so like if you are playing to a song you are playing to a click in it in a way you know but you're playing more with feel because it's yeah. obviously you've got you know you've, you're actually responding to what's going on one of the weird things actually i was doing yesterday playing to playing to hip-hop using the double kick but phrasing the bass drum to match the phrasing of the vocal i found was a really interesting oh thing. okay yeah you know so you get like a you get like a rap a rap verse that you know and then you match your bass drum and just keep that going and just just like it's great i, I found it just a really interesting like and uh, maybe just playing just like eight or sixteenths and then yeah, yeah. Eight on the snare and then exactly you know and then phrasing the, the around drum. it as well it was great like i was loving that i mean i'd never done that before so lots of stuff really like that but just not being too strict with it at the moment i i plan to in january um not in a sort of oh it's a new year kind of way but just in january i should be a little bit quieter fewer gigs and things like that few shoots so i'm kind of planning to to be a bit more specific but i don't want to take the fun out of it because you know like the roland has been great I've, i'm so glad i bought it um and it, it's doing exactly what i wanted it to do basically and uh, um yeah it's not an, it's not an electro uh, sorry it's not an acoustic kit but it's it's as close as you know um and yeah it's great i love it I'm, I'm looking forward to getting as many hours in it as I can, really. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. When, when you feel like you can sit and play for three hours, that's that's worth it. Yeah, that's it. Like, the day after I got it, I played it. I played four hours, which is great, on a Sunday afternoon, you know. It's just brilliant, you know. And I, I come in here at 8 o'clock in the morning. Like, I, done that, I didn't do that today, but I did yesterday and the day before. 8 till 9, before breakfast, have a shower first, and then come in here. Like, perfect. That's a great way to start the day. <laughs> yeah. And so have you got any particular plans then for January? What are you going to woodshed? 
Uh, I don't know really. But you're going to wait and see what sort of you know. Yeah, um, yeah. Improvisational approach. Probably more. On, uh, into. I, I, I kind of. Uh, I like playing stuff like with a like a clave pedal, like a like a jam block on a on a bass drum pedal, left foot stuff like a you know like so maybe like a bossa clave and then play kind of Latin grooves and things like that. And, okay, and Ooh, hard around stuff. It. Yeah, play, playing things like where you're keeping that, you know, it's that real four-way coordination kind of stuff um, where you're keeping like a uh, like a samba bass drum pattern going with it, you know, with the right foot. You got that kind of boom, 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 boom and then you've got the gap, 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 or whatever, you know, and then improvising around it. So if you can, like, just splitting your kind of, um, splitting your limbs and, and your brain, really. Um, so that's that's something that I want to. Keep. Would you work for that in a sort of improvisational way, yeah, in the so, sense of like you set up your foot ostinato and then you just see what the hands want to do, or would you go through like a syncopation? Uh, well, when I when I was like practicing a few stuff? months ago, yeah, I was practicing a few months ago, and what I was doing was I would do like um, uh, I'd work through basic rudiments, so it'd be singles, doubles, and paradiddles on the snare drum, um, keeping that keeping those those things going and then looking to switch between the rudiments, you know, and then kind of switch more randomly. So it's a bit more improvised and maybe then missing out notes. So it becomes a phrase rather than just an endless kind of, you know, linear thing mm -hmm. uh, and then starting to move it around the kit as well. So it's kind of that process. Um, the one that really threw me was trying to do a power diddle diddle with that going because that's a group of six over yeah. this thing of this kind of you know in you know like a two bar phrase and it was just that was getting me a little bit to be yeah. honest um yeah, As and yeah I'll, I'll play open handed stuff. and right handed i'll play left and right handed so was, yeah because that's the thing i, I don't know yeah, and that, see, that slipped my mind because that was like one of the, the the thing that made me want to speak to you actually. Yeah. I, I got yeah. carried away with the gear thing because I thought open-handed playing. Have you got time to talk about that? Uh, I've got a go. I've probably got to go to be honest. I've got to basically. Um, I've, I've got to go and collect my car today, which has been having some work done up in Mansfield. Okay. Um, can, can we and, maybe uh, should, should we should we wrap this up here and maybe yeah, we, we should do have another time have a about open-handed playing. 100%. Yeah, that's that was... a very, very interesting topic to me. I've got <laughs> yeah. students who gravitate towards it, and I've been, I, I had a lot of issues with like, are you a left handed person? Left handed. I'm left handed. Okay. Right All right. Yeah. So we will, yeah, because I think mm -hmm. that's right. I think you need to play a right handed kit. I think it's yeah. silly to play a left-handed kit and but i i always worry if i'm giving students that, that pushing them in the wrong direction but a lot of people gravitate towards open-handed anyway but yeah, okay yeah, yeah i think we're going to wrap this up then yeah 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 um right. and we've had a, a good chat about gear and stuff and your youtube channel and yeah. i think we're going to have a little bit of a chat about uh, open-handed playing then because it's a very yeah, very interesting brilliant. topic yeah yeah if you've got some time next week or something let me know yeah, beautiful. I'd love to do that. Yeah, if, you, if you're around. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. get in touch with you then. Sounds okay, good. so so good. Okay, well, uh, okay, we'll do the sort of necessary politeness of thank you very much, Harry, for talking to me. Uh, I've had a good time, obviously. I've enjoyed uh, hearing your story and so on. Um, yeah, and yeah, and so, yeah, watch this space, people. Um, we're going to talk about open-handed playing if there's anyone still here at the end of this <laughs> video. Yeah, nice one. Cool. Okay, cool. beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching this. I think you can all go away and practice.